when you are at the age of 20, what are you doing? Tell me. At the age of 20, uluko nafanya nini? What, are you achieve, what had you achieved by uh, that uh, 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 age, by the time you're 20? Well, today we want to find out from this particular person, a very interesting guy, uh, who has done a lot, and at his age, he has already motivated me. I like this guy. Uh, welcome back. This is Entrepreneurship Tuesday. My name is Ram Maguko, and of course, that's like as always, is why in the morning. Uh, today, we want to talk up to uh, a man called Peter Frederick Moll. Peter Moll. He is, uh, uh, of course, the 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 the, the, the founder and uh, CEO of the Global Youth Movement. Is uh, 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 of course stand up, shout out, which he founded when he was, and as I said earlier, twenty years old. And so far, um, of course, has already, uh, you know, uh, settled in uh, different countries and don't find out more about what he does. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Moll. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. How Thank are you, you doing, much. brother? I'm doing amazing. It's good to be here. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Let me start first of all by saying you have, uh, you recently won the Kenya National Diversity and Inclusion Award. Yes. Uh, for Youth in Leadership 2019. Yes. yes. And of course, um, your organization was overall first runners up, uh, Kenya National Diversity and Inclusion Award, the best youth employment and engagement strategy. Mm. You also recognized in your membership of youth and youth work by His Excellency, the first lady uh, the, uh, of, of Kenya, uh, uh, that is uh, Margaret Kenyatta. Mm. Quite a rapport you've got there. Thank you. And quite a profile. Yes. Um, what do you say about this? Um, how does it make you feel when you look at such kind of achievements? Uh, mm -hmm. and where you, from where you're sitting right now? You know, one thing you have to understand, as a young person who is daring to be more and do more, mm. when you're acknowledged, when you're given an accolade, it is, a, it is an encouragement. Yeah. It is kind of like a litmus test. It is the indicator that you're on the right path. Wow. And I think many young people need that encouragement mm -hmm. because as entrepreneurs, as dreamers, you go, you start, there's hurdles, there's obstacles, and no one is saying good job. No one is saying you're on the right path. So when you win such awards, mm. it's like, yeah. Somebody actually recognizes exactly. what you're doing. It gives and somebody you a boost. has seen it. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Um, for those who don't know you, mm. let's just g give us a brief, just briefly. Okay. Who is Peter Moll and uh, what are you all about? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Peter Frederick Moll. Uh, I started an organization when I was 20 because mm. I was uncomfortable. When you're uncomfortable, <laughs> you basically have two options. Change or hide. Uh, and I'm sure so many of us hide, but I'm th I thank God that I changed. And I am basically a youth leader, mm -hmm. a conservationist, a humanitarian, uh, leadership developer, community developer. I am someone who wants to see the African youth as assets, as solutions. Mm. I want to position them in opportunities that they can apply the knowledge they've learned in informal mm -hmm. and formal education. I am somebody who believes that our future depends on nature and because we have dreams we need tomorrow mm -hmm. and so hence our organization focus a lot on nature a lot on youth inclusion a lot of policy work uh, grassroots work and if someone to know who I am I'm a dreamer doer I am mm -hmm. a believer in being you being wow, you is the most wow. beautiful thing you can be mm -hmm. the seat you're on is because who you are Mm -hmm. So if you chase a chini, if you jifanya, if you jificha, mm -hmm. then the seat for you disappears. Mm -hmm. But if you if you chase a come aware, if you're who you are, then that seat, that door is for you. It is for your character. It is for your mind. It is for you being authentic. And that's what you have to start being. Most people, when they get bored, they go home, Netflix and chill. But not this guy. He starts a be he starts an organization. <laughs> not this guy. <laughs> Stand up. Shout out. Stand up, shout out, yes. What is that all about? So, stand up means what do you believe in? What are your values? What do you safeguard? What do you stand for? Mm -hmm. Shout out, see Kalele Tupu. Shout mm -hmm. out is how do you shout out through your action, mm -hmm. solution oriented thinking. Mm -hmm. Suso is a home for change makers. Yeah. It is a place for a mentality. It is about youth empowerment and youth inclusion. Mm -hmm. It's about poverty reduction, conservation, mm -hmm. uh, good governance. It is really about, like I said, 
you as a young person, we love that youth are many, but does that number count? Mm. So it's about how do we position young people to be to chase the to play their role. Mm-hmm. 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 Because one thing you have to understand, I used to be an activist, huh? mm. but I changed very quickly because I realized the government can't do it all. And if I want a future, I must help them do their job. We are the ones who should take exactly. our responsibility. Exactly. We must build the capacity. We must fill the gap. Because if we continue just complaining, mm. nothing is going to happen, to be honest. And that's why we have global youth movements. Yes. Because now you want to, you know, everybody to come together and, 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 and do something about, about it. But, but now, let me get your view mm. about your perspective about the youth in Kenya. Mm. We complain about mm. the government, the economy, mm. COVID, mm. and now fuel, mm. and, 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 and of course, so many things, loans. <laughs> um, what's your perspective about the position of youth, even when it comes to govern- leadership and governance in the country here? You see, there's something we normally say about my peers. Yeah. If you go to a forum and you see young people stand up and speak, and they want to speak forever, you know why? Because they feel they don't have a voice. They feel they don't have a space. Yeah. When it comes to governance and our economy and everything that's going wrong, the issue is there is no structured space for young people to be and play a role. Mm. So what happens is we find Twitter. Because Twitter is a space where we can say what we want to say. Mm-hmm. We find whatever space we can say what we want to say. So young people need structured space to be the change makers that they are. Mm. So I wouldn't say that youth are complaining too much. I would say yeah. that they feel like they have to fight for a space. But no, we as a country, as a continent, must give youth structured space to apply their knowledge, mm-hmm. to apply their skills, and to be the change makers that they need to be. Mm-hmm. So it's really about that they feel lost, and they feel angry, frustrated, they have energy that they can't utilize. And a young person that has energy they can't utilize can utilize it in a wrong way. Mm-hmm. When I started in 2013, when I was 20, yeah. one of the things we said, we want to make doing good easier than doing bad. Because doing bad was so easy. <laughs> Give me time to, to digest what you've said. <laughs> you want to make doing good easier. Easier than doing, than bad. doing bad. Because doing bad because, is so easy. Because doing bad is so easy. Yeah. Wow. I've, I've, I've seen that in so many aspects, mm. so many angles, at work, mm. uh, at school, mm. uh, even, uh, even in terms of leadership. Doing bad is, 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 is easy because people do um, evil things because, you know, no, no one cares. Mm. You know, we are saying, okay, they did it, so can I. Yeah. They stole, yeah. so can we. Yeah. And it's okay yeah. because you, you believe that Haiduru, as long as I'm a part of and you see, something that I want to bring to your attention is the lack of values. You see, as a young person, making money nowadays is so disconnected from values. Mm-hmm. You think making money is corruption. You think making money is going around the corner. So as many young people, making money looks like you have to do the wrong thing. So we need to instill values. As an organization, we love something called Ubuntu. I am because we are. Mm-hmm. Compassion, mm-hmm. kindness, unity, empathy. Yeah. How can I be happy when you are not? Yeah. Having values in entrepreneurship is key. And I liked what the previous speakers were saying. Like It's not about money. Mm. It's about serving your gift. Mm-hmm. And that's what I say. Serve mm-hmm. your gift. Serve your gift. Serve your gift, you'll get the money. Serve your gift, you'll get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Find what you're good at and serve it. What do you think about the uh, the rate of youth unemployment Mm -hmm. and how we are engaging our youths in the country so far? Mm -hmm. Uh, So far we are at an electioneering period, Mm -hmm. people are campaigning and one thing that is common with everybody who is campaigning is that they talk about employment. (laughs) You know, one thing that I would give to every person who creates employment Mm -hmm. is a high five. Creating employment is not easy. Mm. Whoever lied to you gave you a big disservice. Actually, creating employment is not easy because one thing is you are creating a task and a role for a young person or for someone Mm. to get paid for. And so it is not easy, but it is needed. And so that's why I'm saying not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But being an entrepreneur is finding a need in society, filling that need and getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about this election uh, period, everyone is talking about unemployment and everyone talking about youth. Mm. But really, do they mean it? We have to make sure that when we talk about youth, we're not just using the word 
hivi hivi mm. give it meaning give it dignity you know you, you've been an activist before you, you and, and and you mentioned you stopped it yes and uh, now you're trying to look at things from a different perspective yes um do you see do you still feel like they mean it now that you're looking at them from a different lens so one thing that made me change from being a full-on activist to uh, a youth leader and a, a community developer and a conservationist is the fact that when you are working against government, mm. they see you as an enemy. But when you are giving them solutions, helping with policy, strategies, giving them ways that they can engage young people and include us in the solution, mm. then they see you as a partner. So for me, it's not about believing them. It's about holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. So in the next uh, government that comes in, we are going to definitely work with them and definitely push them and help them implement and have more opportunities for youth and to see that youth are not just beggars. We don't want handouts. We want to be given the chance to show you what we can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and I love that because you have uh, managed to uh, engage the county government of Mombasa mm -hmm. before. Uh, you did that and you set up youth groups across uh, the coastal regions. I'm looking at Malindi, Kilifi, Kuala and, and, and Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And you carried out uh, advocacy as well mm -hmm. as uh, some cleanups yes. around the area. And you, of course, you engaged the youth in um, managing that particular um, county. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say was the reception? You deal with the youths, you've told them, you know, guys, um, this is an opportunity that uh, I have brought in mm -hmm. this place that can help us in this area and in mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. Now as a youth leader, not mm -hmm. as an activist, mm -hmm. did they accept it? Did they receive you? Because now we, youth complain about <laughs> so many things, yeah. but when a solution is offered, yeah. do they take it up? So one thing that young people, we have developed a mistrust. So we're hesitant because of what we've seen in social media, because of what we've experienced in life. Mm. Youth need to see evidence. And that's one thing we've been able to offer them, is evidence of success, evidence of achievement, and evidence of impact. So from, we're actually based in 39 counties in Kenya. And working in those 39 counties and mm. working in the communities, when we see success in Nairobi, and in Taitadaveta, Nakuru gets inspired. Yeah. When Nakuru has success, Kisumu gets inspired. Mm -hmm. So young people need role models. They need stories of success that is possible. They need hope. Hope is the most priceless thing right now, my friend. Mm -hmm. If you can give young people hope, you give them a direction, you give them an opportunity, they will get it done. They will get it done. What's your take about the government involvement, um, uh, involving the youths in its own activities? So the government are trying, you know, one of the things is devolved functions is new, yet mm. it is old. And so finding ways to actually have it meaningful engagement mm. and not just, oh, kuja, kwa activity, come to the activity, buy. No, we want long-term engagement. So we're trying to really set up long-term partnerships with different government, uh, from devolved functions to the national government, and put in place youth platforms in institutions such as Kenya Wildlife Service, Kenya Forestry Service. Mm. We want to have proper young youth structured platforms where you're not just dependent on me and my organization. There's a whole structure for every young person mm -hmm. to benefit from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the dream. Mm. It's not just about me. We want an entire generation. Where did all this passion come from, my brother? You, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> where, where did this zeal you know, from? You know, one thing, of course, I can say Growing up, I've experienced a lot and I've gained a lot, but I really think it's the something inside me that says you're more than this. You're more than this. Something inside me says that there's more to you, and if there's more to you, there's more to the person next to you. There's more to you, there's more to him, there's more to her. And it is the innate, of course I can say it is God-given, but it is the innate, uh, intrinsic, passionate zeal for I can do more. I can do more and if I can do more it is a disservice not to try and do more mm -hmm. and that if I have a gift within me I must serve it and that is what really really it's about it's, it's just that feeling inside you mm -hmm. that you believe in a GM mini mm -hmm. and you know that you know what I have something to contribute and to mm -hmm. be honest all of us who are born huh, mm -hmm. realize this you're created for a reason and if you don't find that reason then you're giving your parents a disservice God a disservice because you're denying the world you so when you sit and stand up and when you go wherever you're going, mm. you are serving a gift that only you can give. 
let's talk about gifts. Yes. Um, you, 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 you have your own, but now in, in terms of, there's this gift that you have of music. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know you love poetry, you mm. love music. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know how how do they come and play to 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 to, to form Peter Mall? Uh, all this. <laughs> so um, first of all, music is very powerful. Yes. It is one of the po most powerful tools to communicate and inspire. Yeah. Poetry, I say, for me, poetry is like putting together words on a fishing line, throwing it, and then hooking you in. Do do do. do you? Compose, of you? course I compose. And even, you know, poetry is also being an orator. Uh -huh. It's being a public speaker. So I, I say that I'm a very good public speaker, I'm an yeah. orator, so I utilize that poetry there. Mm -hmm. I also used to do slam poetry, uh, uh -huh. but as you go along, you grow into different spaces. So uh -huh. I utilize the power of word mm. now in advocacy, lobbying, in boardrooms. Mm -hmm. Yes. And music? Music, uh, it's no, at that's my that's for no, no, no. Self. I created a project called Open Stage, which is music, culture, and arts, and mm. it's still developing. And music will always be at the center of things. Personally, I have not developed my own music uh, per se, but I give opportunity. We created something called the OYC Suso Choir, which is mm. Own Your Crown Choir, which is a uh, girls from Dagarita and Kibera mm. who are part of our program in leadership and mentorship, mm. and they performed at Amboseli in front of the CS of Tourism and Wildlife wow. from a song we we co-wrote uh, with my colleague. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I still utilize music as much as I can mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. my space. You, you should take it. Uh, have you taken it to the studios? Yes. It's out. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to listen to that one. So it's that called one. Can You Hear Us? Can You Hear Us? Yeah. It's on YouTube. Huh? Uh, not yet released, but when it's released, I'll send it to you. Yeah, that's what I really want to hear that. <laughs> Definitely. Can you hear us? Yes. And and and, and how, how is the reception from from uh, Dagoretti and the, those that you've uh, involved in this? So uh, one thing during COVID nineteen, so we had something called the Empower School program, which is bringing together unfortunate schools. Huh? Mm -hmm. But during COVID nineteen, we stood with them. You know, mostly people shut down, but actually we grew through COVID nineteen by adapting, mm -hmm. and we did food distribution for about two point five million meals, and the main main thing is people love when you stand with them during hard times and not just need them during good times. And so the reception from Kibera and Dagoretti is amazing. It is our home. Actually, mm -hmm. we have a youth center in Kibera mm -hmm. uh, on Karanja Road, and it's a home for change makers, and it's just a beautiful space. So wow. it's been a great reception, wow. and they're just family right now. And that's, that's what we want. We want community. We want strong, sustainable, resilient communities mm -hmm. that are passionate and that are ready to go above and beyond. I, 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 I can see you're trying to fight poverty in this particular angle here. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. poverty reduction. Um, mm. So far, what are the challenges you've uh, you, you, you've gone through that you've faced as a uh, person? One thing that I can tell you is that sometimes when people are given opportunities, mm. uh, they 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 they're too hesitant to step up to the plate, and that's mm. what I was trying to say. Mm. They they want to see evidence of success. They want to they want to be encouraged to take the opportunity. For example, we just mm. secured uh, one million Kenyan shillings for our. TED, which is basically our Suso Biashara, mm. and pushing young people to take this opportunity. We have the money, now you need to make the business plan, you need to make sure you have the work plan, you make sure you have everything covered in your budget, and teaching them and bringing them forward to the plate. And I think in terms of the biggest, the bigger picture of poverty reduction is poverty of the mind. Uh, that is the biggest thing, making someone unleash their mind, open their mind and break their chains of what they have experienced and what they've gone through mm. and telling them it's possible. Mm -hmm. So poverty of the mind is the biggest issue when it comes to poverty. Allowing someone to believe something something different is possible mm. and that they have the solution. That they have lived how they've lived for many years, many generations. Mm -hmm. And you're coming to tell them something different is possible. They can shanga. So you wow. have to really show them that it's possible, change their mentality, and get them thinking solution-oriented, get them thinking action with hope, and get them believing that this is a step in the right direction. Because and it's not instant, uh -huh. but it's a journey. Sometimes they tell you, you know what, you, you, you did not grow up where we grew up. Mm. You don't know how, what we go through. 
So how do you connect with them? Luckily, I, I've never experienced that. Because for me, I wouldn't say I'm the most humble, but I balance humble mm. and cockiness, humble and confidence. <laughs> and I'm approachable in the sense that uh -huh. no matter where I come from, I will sit with you, I'll eat with you, and I'll resonate with you because I've experienced all sides of life. So I will understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's about being human as well. You know, sometimes we make it all about the money. But mm. I make it about the human. Mm. I invest in people. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to make someone feel important, mm -hmm. to feel like they are worthy and that they can be part of society. Let me tell you, the number one issue we have when it comes to youth and anyone is when they are taken away from society. They're isolated from society. They feel, this is not my world. But when you reconnect them, you give them dignity, you show them how they can play a part and a role, that is when they can chase a come at them. Mm. And it's important. What are some of those, 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 those um, um, achievements that uh, you, you got, those accolades you acquired? Because they, there's a whole list of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That stood out for you. That you received and, and, and you can say, of course, you, you, you know, you may acquire so many things. Yeah. But there's, there's only that, that one person, that one item uh, that, that sticks definitely. out from the rest. So there's two. Yeah. When I got the top 35 under 35 2020, uh, it really gave me the encouragement that I am not only seen, mm. I am being heard, and all achievements that my people, that my Sasonians and change makers have done is being acknowledged. Mm -hmm. And that was for me was a huge tick for my community that we are doing something great. Mm -hmm. But actually the biggest one was when we met the president uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So we met His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta. We had a meeting, a boardroom meeting where we presented our organization and what we believe uh, needs to be done. And he loved us. Wow. He loved us because we did not ask for anything. We went there and said, what help do you need? You, you went there and talked. <laughs> And we, yeah, we told him <laughs> what help do we need. And you see, this made him Shanga because he, here we are, we're not asking him for anything. We're telling him we're here to serve. And that's what I'm telling you about serving your gift. No matter what table you're on, whether it is a table in Kibera or a table at State House, you serve your gift and watch what happens. You, you know, for most people, when you have that opportunity to go there, you would say, you know, the pres uh, Mr. President, I'd like you to do this for me. I'd like you to do this, to do mm. this for me. Mm. Instead, you're saying, Mr. President, I want to do this for you. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and Th that is something that we should all learn from. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I think one thing people need to understand that it's yeah. important that what you can offer is the greatest thing you can get. I would like to give you 30 seconds uh -huh. to have a final word, yes. a closing remark. Mm -hmm. Talk to that youth who is watching you. Mm -hmm. I'm, not going, I'm, not, I'm not going to put you in any particular... <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. in, in whatever you feel, you know, down in your spirit, talk to somebody there. Closing remarks. Thank you. Mm. I think I'll start first with entrepreneurship. I think it's important that young people understand, be patient. Mm. Be patient doesn't mean waiting. It means how you wait. You need to understand you have a gift, you have an idea, you need to give it to the world. Don't be selfish. Being a servant leader is the best thing you can be. When you serve your gift, doors open for you. And you are sure Kweli. Let me tell you something. This world needs you. We're in a time of climate change. We're in a time of biodiversity loss. We're in a time of wildlife extinction. You have a dream. That dream needs tomorrow. Tomorrow needs clean air, clean water, food security. And that means it needs nature. That means your dream needs nature. That mm. means your dream mm -hmm. needs a tomorrow to become a reality. Mm -hmm. But it needs you, no one else. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have to offer, without your phone, without the clothes you have, without the assets you have, you as an individual, you are talented, you are more than worthy, you are more than enough. Stop isolating yourself, stop putting yourself in chains, mm -hmm. free your mind and get to the table. Wow. Influence your space, you can do it. Thank you. That is Peter Frederick Mole the founder and CEO of Global Youth Movement. Stand up, shout, shout out. out. Suso.
Asante, Asante. Thank you. I wish you the best. Thank Keep you Keep so doing much. what you're doing. Asante. I'm looking forward to even more accolades coming from uh, Asante, your friend. And I hope even more and more people get to see what you're doing. Thank uh, you. know, let it spread. Thank uh, you. I, I love that energy, my brother. Thank Keep you. It up. Thank you so much for I coming. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, that is at the end of this conversation right here on Why in the Morning. And, of course, thank you so much for being part of this particular program. My name is Ram Aguko. May God bless you. May God bless the work of your hands. Have a fantastic day.